whatever time you are watching this. Um, our Sunday morning takes place here at 4 o'clock on Friday afternoon nowadays. So uh, we welcome you and we are glad that you have chosen to tune in with us and be a part of our community. So uh, please say hello. Please uh, let's keep in contact as a church and let's keep our connection going and let's celebrate today. Let's celebrate the spirit of the living God.
Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall no longer lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, with your company on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of a new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and all of us gathered homes or in other places today, and on these gifts from the field and the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in with ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. A vast universe, 
Who can know it? What mind can fathom it? We look out to the endless suns and ask, what are we? What are our dreams and hopes? What are we that you are mindful of us? What are we that you should care for us? Loving God, we thank you. Amen. And we thank you for your continuing support of our ministries here. And all that we are able to do, uh, we are finding unique and different ways to get the job done for our Lord during these difficult times. And we do appreciate your support as do those who receive those ministries. So generous God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, we present our offerings to you. It is a portion of the talents and the resources that you have given us and the good work that we have been able to do. Use this offering. Use it. Use us in service to your world, to the glory of your name. Amen. Hello, children. It was really fun waving hi to you, uh, many of you, the other night when you picked up your VVBS travel bags in your cars. You know, last week I talked to you about what to pack when you take a trip. Since our virtual vacation Bible summer is starting today, Sunday, I thought I should talk about where we're going on our first pretend trip. You know, usually people decide where they want to travel before they pack their suitcase. So, except for week three, when I'll let you pick, I have already decided where we're going on our virtual vacations. How did I decide? There are many decisions to make when choosing a vacation. Should we go somewhere to relax, or somewhere we can explore and learn new things? Should we go somewhere familiar that we've been before and really like? Or should we go somewhere new? Should we go somewhere close to home? Or maybe somewhere far, far away? Should we travel by car or plane or train? Do you have a favorite type of vacation? For your VVBS, I picked our trip locations based on a Bible story for each one. I wanted you to have new Bible stories to experience and not the same ones you might have heard many times. Our Bible story for trip number one reminded me of a couple places here in Nebraska that are fun to visit. Here's a map of Nebraska and here's where we are. Our first trip is going to take us way up here in Nebraska to Ash Falls Fossil Beds. There's actually a picture on the screen behind me from when Pastor Jim visited there. A second place we're going to go is Morrill Hall, which is part of a museum here in Lincoln. Both of these places have bones of prehistoric animals and skeletons, either in the ground or in the museum. You know, I thought most of you kids would think that prehistoric animal bones were pretty cool. They're kind of like dinosaurs. For our Bible story, I couldn't find any dinosaur stories in the Bible, but there's a pretty crazy story about bones in the Old Testament. It reminds me of this. What's wrong with this skeleton? It's all broken apart and kind of sad and lifeless. Do you ever feel like you're just not altogether right? Maybe you're extra tired or sad or just not very excited about doing anything? I know lately we all might be feeling a little bit this way because we have to stay home more, can't see our friends or some family as much. You can't come to church and do VBS the way we normally do. You know, your other camps or activities like baseball or swimming that you had signed up for might be canceled. It's easy to stay in a bad mood if we're not careful. 
it's easy to stay frustrated, sad, or even mad. So I hope this first trip will get us all excited and lift our spirits. In your first Bible story, something really amazing happens to these dry bones because of God. We'll learn how God gives us life and breath. He can take dry, lifeless, tired, old bones and change them for the better. He can do the same with you and your spirit. So let's rely on God to give us life and power to get us going on this first virtual vacation. Every vacation should start with asking for God's help. Our bags are packed. We know where we're going. So now let's ask God to help us get there. Please pray with me. Dear God, please fill us with your life and spirit. Give us energy and excitement to learn about you. Please be with our families as they travel through VVBS together. Thank you, Lord, for caring about us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy traveling. Well, now we come to our time of prayer. And as I said, here in, in the time that we are actually present here, it is Friday afternoon, and uh, we have been told that the curfew will be back in place tonight and tomorrow night, a little later, 10 o'clock. But we're also told that there are gatherings planned, and they may bring thousands of people together. And so we pray for those gatherings. We stand with those who peacefully protest the injustice in our society. And we pray for them and we pray that they, um, we pray that they are fulfilled in what they are doing in their protest. We pray that people will pay attention to the message that they are trying to put forth. And we pray that no one will come into their midst and instigate trouble violence as we have also seen. So we pray for all of the gatherings that will take place over this weekend and we pray that good may come out of evil. We also pray for the health of our nation and the world. We pray for those people who will be out there marching um, in close proximity to one another. We pray that that doesn't spike another outbreak in our community. We pray for our state, our county. Uh, we are not making very good progress in this fight against COVID-19 here in our area. And so we pray that people will be a little bit more mindful. And we pray for those who are hospitalized and those who are taking care of them. And we offer this prayer. Glorious God, we give thanks anew for your presence and for your providence, and we prayerfully seek your grace amidst COVID-19 here in our community, in our land, in our nation, and overseas throughout the world. We pray for those who are in need of healing. We pray for the healers and those who facilitate their work. We pray for those who are doing research and trying to bring us better courses of treatment. And ultimately, ultimately, we pray a vaccine. We pray for peace with those who are anxious and grieving. And we pray that you will continue to strengthen and sustain all of us in this time. We pray for our nation and the family of nations with all that is in our hearts. And we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We also pray this week for Jody Kratke, who went to the Lord this week, and we pray for her family and all of those who loved her. We pray for all of the members of the Morning Joys Circle, who were her closest friends here, and all her friends at Rockbrook. She was a 15-year member here at Rockbrook. So we pray for her and her family and all who loved her, that that love may continue to grow and that those memories and the thoughts, the remembrances, the laughter, the joy, 
and the apricot bread will continue to be a loving remembrance of her us. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us close with the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
anxiety, and a lot of prayer, and renewed dialogue about racial and economic justice that we hope will continue, that we hope will continue peacefully and rationally, and that will make real improvements and promote lasting change. Some of you, or someone you know, may have been directly affected and been right in the thick of it this past week, either by choice or because you live in one of these areas where these things were happening, where the marchers were, or where the violence was, or your businesses are there. This very strange year has gotten stranger. Reverend Junius Dotson says that we are now navigating two viruses, racism and pandemic. As I've said in the past few weeks, one bringing the other out of the shadows and into the light. And today, I stand here to talk to you about love. Anybody remember love? Well, there are many ways to think about God, and one of the great things about being United Methodist is that we think and explain God in the light of love. There are other ways to explain God. If you've been a part of other denominations, you probably know that firsthand. So, explain love. Well, let's go deeper. Let's ask the question, what is love? Well, God is love. We've all heard that so many times. We assume that the Bible has that throughout the whole book. It must be in the Bible hundreds of times, mustn't it? Two, it's in there twice, actually both in the same chapter, both in 1 John chapter 4. The second of those is in verse 16, which reads, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. So how do we get there? How do we reach that point where we live and have our whole being in God's love? Well, first, we must be reborn, as we heard in our gospel reading today. For John Wesley, new birth is the beginning of a holy life and the beginning of sanctification. In his sermon, The Marks of New Birth, John Wesley found God's love expressed in another passage from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Wesley went on to say that love is the greatest mark of those who have been born of God. Let the spirit of love and glory rest upon them. Well, love is never solitary and never selfish. Not if it's the real thing. Love pours itself out caringly for the neighbor. We care for our neighbor as we have been cared for by God. We love our enemies as God loved us while we were being enemies of righteousness. In her book, To Love as God Loves, Roberta Bondi wrote, People are different from each other. What keeps me from being able to love is probably very different from what hinders you. What corrects my lack of love may only make your situation worse. Love is always personal. And just as God loves every person, the Holy Spirit is being poured into our hearts, freeing us to love every person. In his sermon, Wesley said that the fruit of our love of God is loving our neighbor, every soul that God has created, even our enemies, even those who persecute us. We love every person as ourselves, just as we love our own souls. Wesley pictured Christian thought as a great rotunda with archway entrances all around it. Mildred Banks Wincoop said, no matter which archway you enter, it always leads to the central hall of love. But we must be humble enough and committed enough to pass through the archway. To truly love, to truly know Jesus, to emulate Jesus, we must care for others, empty ourselves for others, and look out for others' interests, not of our own. Not only 
witnesses promote overall well-being, but it also demonstrates Christ to the world. In the midst of last weekend's chaos, there was a special group of people in our community that weren't heard enough about. Out there demonstrating Christ to the world in an interesting way. They were the people who came out on Saturday and Sunday and even on Monday morning and cleaned up our city. Many of them had no stake in the properties or the neighborhoods that they were cleaning. They just felt compelled to do something. These people emptied themselves so that others might be filled. These people understood forgiveness. And these people were the bearers of divine hope in the midst of chaos. This is the answer. This is what love looks like. And this also is what love looks like. One of the saints of the 4th century church, Moses the Black, had been a thief and a robber. But once, while fleeing capture, Moses took refuge with a group of monks in the desert near Alexandria. Moses was so taken by the nuns' dedication and peace and contentment that he stayed there with them, remained with them, converted to Christianity, became a monk, was eventually ordained a priest, and became a prophetic and spiritual leader. Once, when a brother monk committed a fault, Moses was invited to a meeting to discuss uh, appropriate penance. Moses refused to attend. The monks then sent someone to fetch him. As he went, Moses took a leaky jug, filled it with water, and carried it on his shoulder. And when he arrived at the meeting, his brothers asked him why he was carrying the jug. He replied, my sins run out behind me, and I do not see them. But today I am coming to judge the errors of another. On hearing this, the assembled brothers forgave the erring monk. How do you feel? In Galatians, Paul tells us that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. I often refer to this list to determine if I'm on the right track. Do I feel those things in my life? Am I abiding in God? Is how I am reflective of who I say I am? Or who I think I am. If not, what am I missing? Probably one of those things on Paul's list. How do I fix it? How do I return to live in God's sustaining love? As we close, let's hear from Roberta Bondi again. She offers this prayer. Dear God, Help us learn to love the world you have entrusted to us with something like your own love. Since we are made in your image, we know we have this capacity. May we have it. May we use it. May we live it. In Jesus' name. Amen.
And that, friends, is how John's brother Charles Wesley felt about it. God's nature and God's name is love. Go forth from wherever you are, whatever you're going to do this week, whatever your plans are. Some of you may be returning to work or to more activity. Some of you may still be sheltering in place. Some of you may have other plans. Some of you may have a chance to get away and go camping or go visit someone. Whatever you do, wherever you go, remember that God goes with you and you can continue to live your life with our God, whose nature and whose name is love. So go or stay and have a blessed week full of all kinds of amazing blessings. May they come, may they find you, and may you have the wisdom to see them when they come to you. Go forth and have an awesome week. In Jesus' name, amen.